Let's begin, please. Welcome to the Bell Vista City Council Special Meeting, Monday, March 16th, 4.30 in the afternoon. I'll, I'll do a roll call. Councilmember Lloyd? Here. Lynn? Here. Wozniak? Here. Fowler? Here. Burke? Here. Wilms? Here. All present. Thank you. We have one resolution for your consideration this evening, authorizing the mayor to reschedule or cancel work sessions and regular sessions of the city council to protect the public health, safety, and welfare, and for other purposes. This arose this morning when we were having a staff meeting talking about our latest phases and what our action plans as this virus progresses. And it suddenly that became apparent to Mr. Kelly that we didn't have a mechanism in place to be able to change things easily. And so hence I said, well, let's have a special meeting beforehand if everybody's available and put something on the table. <clears throat> so there it is. Uh, Larry, I know that you have some uh, discussion. You dropped something off with everybody. Do you want to talk about it? I do. Uh, I stopped reading at page one, so you can ignore amendment number one. And amendment two is not adding item B, but adding section three, which puts the sunset provision on it. Otherwise, we're effectively amending our our city council rules by this action. Um, and I don't know. Um, we have a special event out there called the coronavirus. Um, situation, um, but I think the, uh, the action may be too broad uh, in terms of coverage. I think we're dealing with, probably in response to this special situation, I would uh, propose adding the amendment as title number two here is section three. This authorization will terminate 44 days following passage. Uh, 44 days is the next council meeting, regular unless extended by action of the council for an additional 30-day period thereafter. I would submit that as an amendment. Is that a motion to amend? A motion to amend. Can we? Do we have a second? Uh, second for we purposes of no discussion. conversation at all, I mean, before we start making amendments. Well, we're going to have a conversation now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, so okay. So now the discussion is strictly on the amendment. Okay. So, uh, okay, who's going to go so, first? Go ahead. You, you, you want to call Mayor, on. You have to, Mayor, you you call, have to call on someone. Okay, so Linda? Well, I believe, I, I understand why we're doing this, but recently we had an issue where it was a tremendously bad weather night, and we were not allowed to reschedule or cancel a meeting because there was nothing in the books to allow us to do that. So by putting a sunset provision on this, you're assuming that this motion, this Action. resolution is just because of the coronavirus, but doesn't that also give us the opportunity, if there's heavy tornado warnings or something like that, to cancel a meeting? That is true. In which case, I think the sunset amendment would not make sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, I agree. Um, I, I don't have a problem with striking and for other purposes because that's pretty broad. You know, I don't know what else that could tell. There's a legal reason for that. I'm talking about the other one. Only he scrapped it. He didn't, he didn't offer the First Amendment. Okay. So do you want to address his uh, Second Amendment, which would be Section 3? Uh, yeah, Second 3. I don't, I don't agree with really necessarily a sunset provision because, I mean, this is for health, safety, welfare, and we never know the timing of, event, of events when they may unfold. I, I think someone needs to have the authority to uh, cancel or delay a meeting uh, for provisions uh, of that. Like Linda said, you know, we had the storm came up, could have a storm, could be a tornado, could be just what we have right now, and I, I think somebody needs to have the authority to, it's not like we're going to, you know, cancel all business moving forward, it's just we're probably going to delay a little bit is all we're going to do, and then we'll pick up city business when it's appropriate. Steve, do you have anything? I, I agree with Jim. Yeah. Putting it into this doesn't make any sense. Can, you, can anybody else before I go back to Larry? Yes, I, I, I would. Uh, you know, I guess I guess whether it should be time bound or not, uh, it's kind of uh, secondary to the question of whether it should exist at all. And for me, the way I'm thinking about it, 
is, uh, yeah, we're in extraordinary times here and we need to be thinking outside the box. But instead of thinking about how the city council might not meet, I'd rather us be thinking about how is it we can continue to meet? How can we continue to uh, meet our responsibilities for the city? Uh, perhaps there is some technology that could be used. Uh, but for me, the, I, it seems like the only good reason to cancel a meeting is because we don't have a quorum. Unless the city council decides not to meet, that's a decision we could make as a group. That would be our decision to make, inclusive of everybody on the city council. So I, I think I, I don't really understand why we would need to authorize new, uh, give, give the opportunity to cancel city council meetings when I think we ought to be doing everything we can to hold those meetings. And, and I, I guess I do feel strongly about it because I think of people like the people that are going to work every day at Allen's to put food out there so the people in Bella Vista don't freak out and the people that are going into our pharmacies, they're, they're getting up every day and they're going to work. And I feel like as a city council, we should darn sure be able to hold two meetings a month. In fact, I think we ought to be prepared to be more uh, engaged over this crisis. I think the leaders of the community ought to be the last ones to go to the sideline. So I'm, I don't like the idea of canceling meetings. And Mr. Kelly, for clarification. Well, just for everyone's information, uh, it would make a lot of sense if the law allowed you to have Skype call-ins or do video or something, but you, unfortunately the law does not permit that. You must be present to vote and present at the meeting. Also, there is no rule you can pass to keep the public from attending your meetings and they have a right to attend. And so, uh, if you have the public showing up, you run the risk of risking the public by having the meeting. That's that's the concern. I mean, if you could have a meeting and then seal out the public, but you cannot do that. So there may be legal quarantines at a state level or, or bigger than that that would keep people from being able to come to us. But legally, we could not say, get out of here. You're here. I mean, it wouldn't be our rule that, shed the, that shut them out. They may have a rule that means they can't leave their home. But if we have a public meeting, we have to be present and the public has to be here. Unless it's a legal executive session for limited purposes related to employment, hiring, firing, and those limited things you can do executive session for. But that's, it's, it's a, and I've had this discussion several times with various people. These are difficult rules in times like this where you're trying to not have people around. But FOI is what it is, and we can't just say, yes, but this is different and important, and we simply can't do that. So uh, having the alternative to cancel the meeting until such time as those dangers do not exist would be something you can do, though you're not legally obligated to do it, and you can still have your meetings. And, and it would be suspending the city council's authority on any matter. That would just be tabled for mm -hmm. future. Right. All this does future. is <clears throat> matters pending on the agenda move to the next available meeting. So. Okay. It doesn't mean things, and it has to be related to public health, safety, and welfare, and it is in the judgment of the mayor. The, the uh, council uh, could not override that, but I've talked to the mayor about his authority. I'm going to talk to the council about your authority. You still have the authority to call special meetings pursuant to the rules. You can call a special meeting and reset your re repeal this and reset your uh, regular agenda if you want to if you think the mayor's being unreasonable or if you th i'm talking about future mayor that wants to say well it's in the best welfare we not have a council meeting well and there's some proposed ex abuse of that we're not we're not talking about anybody around here now we're talking about 10 years from now so uh the council always has the authority to uh, i believe you said two of you state law allows three but you said, too, you can call a special meeting, and you can call a special meeting to repeal this and set a new calendar. You all have the authority over your calendar. Uh, these are extraordinary times, and this is an extraordinary measure. Uh, it is extraordinary, and, and things are, are fluid. And so I may feel it differently a week from now. But uh, as of today, uh, I, don't, I, I still feel like we ought to be preparing to to serve our responsibilities. And I wonder, Mayor Christie, if, if we pass this tonight, are you contemplating canceling next week's regular session? That's something we can talk about in the work session, if you so desire. Um, we have an awful lot on the flatter here, but by the same token, if you watch the president today and what the new guidelines are, it's mm -hmm. less than 10 people now. Right. 
um, is it really prudent on our part, on our part to do that? Right. Um, and I can address that, you know, when we get to those particular items. Okay. But it's something we could talk about, and mm -hmm. if it's if it's need be, then yes. Mm -hmm. And then we would wait two weeks, assess it, and then bang. If we think we need one in, in early April to pick up, so that the April normal meeting is not going to be really crowded, and we have contracts here as well that may time out on us, then yes. Mm -hmm. But it gives me the flexibility, because without this, I haven't got that flexibility. We would have to wait till our normal meeting in April. And then there may be repercussions on the contracts. We may have to go back out to bid, et cetera, et cetera. Can I, can I <clears throat> Your greatest responsibility is to the public health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of this city. That is your greatest responsibility. I'll leave it at that. No, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, tonight I look around the room and I see who's in here, and from what I understand it, it doesn't even have to be one of us. It could be somebody that we come in contact with, yep. and then when they know that, that person, you know, somebody in here has been in contact with that person, mm -hmm. then it'll come back to us, and then we're quarantined, and then we have our wives, you know, uh, and or husbands or whatever the case may be, you know, I'm covering everybody or wh whoever, right? I'm just saying that it, it follows a line and now, you know, where are we taking ourselves? And I think we be, need to be more prudent than that. Okay. Larry? Uh, uh, Councillor, in the latitude that we have with the council rules now, if we have inclement weather, uh, isn't there something in the purview there that, no. 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 that, can't, no. that can't be done? No. We have a now, well, the discussion at this point is still on the amendments. We drifted right. off that. The discussion is on Larry's amendment at this point about the termination date. I should point that out. I guess, given the circumstance, I, I think that there may be some rationale for uh, not having the, the sunset provision. But based upon, I think, the impetus of, that we have it before us, it's likely driven by that current situation in, in, in the country. And around the world, and I still would, uh, I still strongly feel that we need a sunset provision on this, John? this rule. Well, I didn't have a comment before, but I do now that I've heard other people say. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious we should have this rule. I think Linda made a very good point about weather, and I thought it was a bad situation before when we couldn't cancel a meeting, you know, with very bad weather bearing down on us. Um, you know, it's a matter of protecting the public, and and I, I really don't think the current mayor or future mayors are going to abuse it. And as our attorney pointed out, if they did abuse it, there's ways for council to respond to that. So I think we should go ahead and pass it the way it is. I have an amendment. Jim? I want that was with the original Okay. Anything further? Okay, we have a motion. There is no second. Yeah, there was a second. Yeah, there was a second. Oh, that's right. Steve seconded or. So you're discussion. voting on the amendment only at this point. Okay, I'm going to call roll for that. This is on the amendment. Councilmember Wilms? Aye. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Councilmember Fowler? No. Councilmember Wozniak? No. Councilmember Flint? No. Councilmember Lloyd? No. Fails. Okay, now we go back to the original resolution. Is there any, is there any further discussion? There, there is for me. Uh, uh, the first, uh, amendment number one, uh, and for other purposes, I, I'm not real comfortable with that, where that might go in the future, that could be used. I'm not no, saying by There's a legal reason for that. I, okay, well, okay, give it to us then. Okay, well, the, the law is that the, the title of an ordinance or resolution has to specify what it does. And so not knowing what direction you all would go in tonight with what you wanted to pass, I needed to put that in the title in order to account for it. And this is something that's kind of come up in terms of the animal ordinance we've been dealing with as well. I didn't want an issue about that. So if you all had wanted to provide a time limit on that, normally the title would also need to say, and providing a sunset provision, or you may, I don't know what all you may want to come up with. And, and, and rather than have to change the title, which could create issues for us, 
you every state law you see passes the legislature says and for other purposes on it and the only reason for that is to cover whatever you have said in the text of the uh, ordinance or the resolution of the ordinance itself so that it is covered by the title all you're adopting is what's in section one and two you can't no one can go back and just start adding stuff and changing things you're only adopting the language in section one and two that title is only to cover our state statutory requirement that the title and cover whatever it is you're doing in the text and we don't do that a lot but we I'm going to you're going to start seeing it on everything because we're changing a lot of stuff we're having a lot of amendments to things and so it's actually getting to the point where it's changing the heart of what these things are actually doing so I've got a cover for that in these titles and so that's why you see this here because there's no nothing that can be sli it's only what's going to say in section 1 and 2 is what you're adopting anybody else anybody else okay we don't have a motion so Second. Any okay. further last discussion thoughts? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Just a final thought on it. I, I think I'm going to oppose this uh, resolution, and uh, I just uh, I, I sense it's probably going to pass. I just I don't find it necessary. I think in some respects it's disempowering to the city council. Uh, but even if it does pass, I hope that all of us as city council members that we're going to hold on to the rope as long as we can that oh, we're not that we're the last you know as leaders of the community we ought to be the last ones to go to the sideline so i hope we'll continue to meet as best we can unless it just becomes so extreme that it's a violation of any kind of public health standards that might be in play at that time okay. um, following that comment i would ask our attorney if we did not have a meeting what is the legal repercussion? If if this were not passed, and well, who, who could keep, no one could keep you from having it. I mean, no, no. My point is, okay. You mean if you don't pass this and no one shows up next Monday, what happens? Yes. Well, we'd have to show up and call the roll, and the and there'd be no quorum, and well, then it would pinned over to the next month. Well, but if there were an like I mentioned, an extreme weather thing. Say there's tornado warnings going through here, and we don't have this in place. Then we'd be operating in violation of our rules, technically. And uh, I mean, I don't want to imagine how someone might try to challenge us. I mean, if if you all just decided you weren't going to meet anymore, I'm sure someone could sue and force a meeting, or something along those lines. Folks, cities don't. My my con the reason I'm asking is if this isn't in place and there's a tornado warning, does somebody have to show up at the meeting? to call it and then I'm going to be there because the law would require it and I'm going to follow the law. Well, that is my concern if we don't have this in place. And Wayne had Wayne would have to call the roll and I would tell he would ask me what to do and I'd say Wayne, we got to be out there and you've got to call the roll and if none of you showed up then we he'd call the roll and I'd advise we don't have a quorum and we'd all pack up and leave. But I would make sure that happened because I'm going to make sure the law, law is followed. Right, and I wouldn't want to put your life and Wayne's life in jeopardy by not allowing for this. Well, that's an excellent point. I didn't even think about that. But, yeah, you're right. And all the staff would have to be here in case. You'll meet the next month. Yeah. If this allows the mayor to reschedule. If you don't have it, you don't have it at all, show up next month. No. The mayor said, if it's a big deal, you'll have a special meeting in between. Yeah. You, 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 what this allows, I want to make sure everyone is a, understands what this does, okay? This allows the mayor to, rescan, to, to um, reschedule or cancel. So he could cancel it and we could go to the next month, or he can reschedule it. So, for example, if you, and that would be the regular meeting, say, for this month in March, if the mayor determines that we need to get through this 15 days that the White House and the CDC have just said here a couple of hours ago that we don't need to get groups of 10 or more together. So on day 16, I'm going to call, I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and have the March meeting on day 16 at 6.30 in the evening. The mayor can reschedule it as long as we send two hours notice out to the media and to the public. Then we'll be able to do that pursuant to this. Uh, or he can cancel it. But it doesn't have to be a special meeting because that has a different implication. But you also can call a special meeting if you need to for whatever purpose now. Okay? All right. 
Yeah, I'd like to make a couple of points. The first one is what the attorney was just talking about. It actually happened last summer. I was mayor pro tem, and we knew ahead of time that we didn't have a quorum, and we had to show up and call the media and say, oh, gee, we don't have a quorum, and then go home. No, there was no bad weather, but we actually had to do that knowing there wasn't going to be a meeting. And uh, the second thing is, you know, the way Steve was looking at it, uh, it's kind of like, you know, being gung-ho enough to have a meeting. But really, the president said today there shouldn't be get-togethers of 10 or more people. There's 18 people in this room like, right now. It's not just a question of our risk. We're actually letting society down. That's the point. There's other people. Not, it's not just you risking yourself. You're letting society down, really. I mean, that's, a, that's the point of not getting together. It's for other people, it's not just for you. So, it's another way to look at it. I guess I, I think it's imperative upon us as the governing body for Bella Vista to meet as, as often and as frequently as we need to to address any urgency situations, whether it's a, a city emergency due to a storm or due to the coronavirus situation uh, affecting us nationally. I, I see no reason for us to discontinue our, our regularly scheduled meetings now because of this uh, alert across the nation. Um, personally, my personal opinion is that it's, that it's overrated when you look at the number of deaths and the impact on the flu influenza uh, number of deaths versus number of people who have contracted the, the flu. Uh, so when you compare those statistics with what we've seen thus far, we're looking at about a 2% incidence of death to, to cases, from what I can tell. And most of those happen to be elderly, which affects Jim and I probably more than any of you in the room. Um, but notwithstanding that, uh, I think it's imperative that we conduct the city's business in a, in a good, responsible fashion. I'm not prepared to put anybody's life on the line. I think John's got a good point. Is there anybody else at all? Okay, seeing none. Okay, we have a motion. I was to accept the motion, or to accept this resolution as presented, and I believe Doug seconded it. So we'll call the roll. Councilmember Wozniak? Yes. Councilmember Lloyd? Yes. Councilmember Flynn? Yes. Col Fowler? Yes. Burke? No. Wilms? No. All right. It passes four to two. Okay. That's the end of the business for the special meeting. We will adjourn and reconvene at 5.30 for the work session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.